And we are live. What's up, guys? So we have an epic part two podcast with Coach Kyle on. And before we say, before we jump into this, I do want to say this. So last night I was I was telling you this. I was going through. Oh fuck! <laughs> it was just a replay. So I was going through my YouTube analytics and I was seeing, okay, like which one of my podcasts, uh, you know, got the most, you know, views, whatever, what people like. And I, dude, I wouldn't have expected this, but our part one was number one out of all the podcasts I've done. I've done probably. 50 podcasts by now. And you know what was interesting? P place number two, three, and four were all just hot chicks. So it yeah. wasn't like – it wasn't even close, right? So, like, I think place number four was, like, Austin Summers or something like that. So, right. like, you would think that, like, the hot chicks would be, like, number one. Like, I had Miss Raquel on. I've had porn stars on. I've had, you know, that uh, Kezia Noble on. But, yeah, man, you're still holding strong at number one. So we want to do a part two and answer any questions we might have missed and also to share a few funny stories – that have transpired recently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Maybe we should start out with that. Or if you had something else planned, let's No, we will. Uh, I just want to do this. For anyone who, for some odd reason, is not familiar with you, can you just give a quick 30-second summary? Yeah. Um, Coach Kyle, 31 years old, grew up social or antisocial, World of Warcraft <laughs> virgin loser, didn't go to my high school prom, didn't have a date till I was 21, got into a five-year relationship that ultimately wasn't really on my terms, got out of that because ultimately she left me for another man, got into pickup, transformed my dating life, my social circle, my communication skills, improved my looks, and just kind of leveled up as a man. And over the last two, three years, I started coaching this stuff and just resonating with guys that have been in my shoes that have that same frustration that I had and showing them the steps to get out of that, where, wherever you would call it, that hole or that frustration. Um, and yeah, just how to be a, a cool dude, I think, and that gets women and, and lives the life that you want to live, you know? Yeah, I would say if I had to pick one coach who I would say is closest to my style, I would pick you. Uh, I think for several reasons. One is we're both big believers in a combination of game and sexual market value. Right, because there's there's extremes. There's people who are all about you know looks, max looks, everything else doesn't matter, and there's people all about game, looks don't matter, right? But we both kind of preach somewhere in the middle. Like mm -hmm. you know, you, you've mentioned you've done two hair transplants, you've got tattoos done. Like if you look at your before and after pictures, it's not even the same. It's no, like you're, but you're no, yeah. and yeah. I think if you look at my. I don't think my transformation is extreme as yours. Uh, hopefully, in a few years, it'll be. <laughs> okay, I'll get a hair transplant. But uh, also, like, if you look at pictures of me five years ago when I was 130 pounds and now it's like two different human beings. Yeah. I think the two areas where you and I differ, uh, the big one is you primarily do cold approach. I primarily do online. Yep. That's yep. one. And the second one, I think I'm a little bit more of a troll than you are. Interesting. Like your game is a bit more like straightforward. Mine has more elements of trolling to it. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I was actually just watching your infield probably three hours ago. It was the, what was it? It was, a, I think it was Colombian au pair, au pair that, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was just, I was just watching that. So it was interesting. Yeah, I actually yeah. haven't watched any of your infield up until two hours ago. So that was like the the one that I, I saw. I would like to see some night game from you. If do you have night game posted on your, um, no, but I do have some infield. I'll send, I'll send you the Google drive link. Um, Wait. we only start shooting infield like literally a month ago. Yeah, I saw you kind of tapping into that that whole um, field, yeah. which is exciting to see. I'm not going to go too much to delve into it. It's uh, it, it's fun. It's fun to do. It's also a massive pain in the ass. Uh, yes. So I wanted to just put out some infield because a big criticism I was always getting, like, oh, well, you seem good, but you don't have any infield. Um, right. So, right. I want to put this to rest once and for all. And also, no, actually, the main reason I did it was that's the one thing people kept requesting. So people on my channel were like, dude, we'd love to see some infield of you. So I do try to be very cognizant of what my subscribers want. You know, like if they want this, even though I personally don't want to do it, I'll do it anyway. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, that was, that's kind of the reason. But it, it does have its moments because, like, when I know I'm being videotaped, I'm going to go harder, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's like – if yep. I, like, for example, today, right, I'm walking and I see like a really difficult set. It's like six girls. They're all sitting down having dinner. Like normally, I pro especially during the daytime, probably wouldn't approach that because it's low probability. It's a harder situation. Yep. But because I'm being videotaped, I'm like, yo, if I can pull this off, it'd be really fucking epic. So I'm going to do it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it did not go down. But yeah, like <laughs> I've had situations where I wouldn't have done something. But because I was being videotaped, I did it and it worked out well. So, for sure. For sure. I think that's a big point you just made, actually, that I tell a lot of 
my clients that are on mentorship, which is just the importance of finding leverage to force yourself to take action uh, more than you normally would. I'm not saying you need to have a camera crew and a microphone on you, but finding ways to use your life and your whether it's your social circle or some form of accountability or hiring a mentor, using that as leverage to kind of force yourself to take action and maybe push yourself a little extra out of your comfort zone. I mean, to be completely honest, guys, like I studied pickup for nine months without ever doing a single cold approach. I just yeah. was the fucking theory junkie that sat at home that thought he was getting better because he was studying pickup for nine months straight. And then I would go out with my friends and I couldn't do shit. You know, and it was the quote of a guy going through bodybuilding forms and not hitting the gym. Wait, wait a guy like looking at like bodybuilding right. theory without right. ever going to the gym. Yeah, it's like practically the same thing. Exactly. Uh, yeah, before we go any further, though, uh, someone in the comments said the audio isn't working. Can you guys give me a thumbs up if you can hear us correctly? So just give us a thumbs up if everything is good. If not, just write in the comments who you can't hear. I do want to touch on that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what I want to wait, let me see. Okay. Uh, I did want to touch on this a little story that we had quite recently. So uh, you, you know where I'm getting with this. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're getting, we're getting a bunch of thumbs up. I'll, t- I'll tell my you, you tell the story and then yeah, I'll yeah. talk about it from my perspective too. Okay. So this this is this is the story from my perspective. So um I'm I'm out I'm out with a bunch of my friends. I run into Austin Summers, who's running a program, and he's a good buddy of mine. So I love Austin. So me and him start shooting the shit and uh, we're just laughing, having a good time. He's like, yo, dude, he's like, there's this one chick here who's really fucking hot. Like, I've been trying to game her. And I was like, where? She's like, oh, I can't find her. And then me and him go in and do a set. I actually wind up opening a girl who I banged like a year and a half ago. And she's like, she's like, Alex, we had sex. I'm like, oh, what's your name? She's like, blank. I live down the street from you. Oh, yeah. Hey. But so anyway, so me and Austin are in that set. And then I see him like leave in the middle. I'm like, hey, where'd you go, man? He's like, oh, I saw that hottie. I was like, okay. Now at this point, I'm kind of curious what this chick looks like because, you know, Austin has banged a lot of girls. So if he thinks a chick is really hot, then, you know, she's got to be really hot, right? So maybe 10, 15 minutes later, this 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 hottie, we stumble upon her, right? And, uh, you know, me and Austin both start chatting her up. And uh, it, it's a good conversation. Like, I'm not feeling like strong DTF vibes from her. And that night I was kind of like, I was just in between a bunch of different sets. So I wasn't like, I was more just like shooting the shit with her. But Austin was like legitimately interested in her. And also another big part of it is because Austin saw her first. I didn't want to like try to game her from him. So in situations like that, I'm not going to like go hard, right? So I'm just shooting the shit. And yeah, this chick is cool. Like um, I wouldn't say she's like my perfect 10, but she's definitely very attractive. It's like an eight or nine for me. Uh, So anyway, so we're talking to this girl and this is going on for like 10 minutes. And then she, how, how does, how does this transition happen? She mentioned something about some guy doing pickup and, she mentioned something about how some guy once told her he was a dating coach. And I, I was like, oh, well, I'm a dating coach too. She's like, oh, shut up. I'm like, yeah, no, that's what I do. We're both are, me and Austin. She's like, she's like, oh, yeah, well, what's your name on YouTube? I'm like, well, Playing With Fire. My name is Alex. She's like, no, you're not Alex from Playing With Fire. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm like, do, am I ugly? <laughs> she's like, holy shit. She's like, I know your channel. I'm like, really? Because well, I'm like, how do you know my channel? She's like, well, I'm dating a guy who you worked with. I was like, really? Who? And she's like, he's like, he's like, you guys did a collaboration together. And I'm trying to think of like, who did I do collabs with? For some reason, I could not think of your name. But yeah, long story short, longer, though, it turned out to be a girl that you're sort of, you know, dating or something like that. So it was just, uh, and then we FaceTimed you, I remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was, yeah. that was we, I got a pretty good kick out of that. It was like, yeah. what are the fucking odds? You live in New Jersey. I live in Miami. It's not like we're in the same city. What are the right. odds that... The one chick that me and Austin are trying to hit on <laughs> happens to be the girl that's dating a friend of mine who lives across the world or across the country. Yeah, small fucking world, bro. Actually, the, the more I spent, the more time I spent in Miami, the more I realized, like, yo, Miami is not as big as I thought it was. Like, just from running into like six or seven different guys that are like somewhat related to self development and pickup out there, which was kind of crazy. And, and to experience that in such a short amount of time, I, I really thought it was. It's a big. But small city at the same time, at least right, yeah. from my experience. Oh, yeah. yeah. But anyway, I'll, I'll quickly tell my side of the story. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so my girl, obviously, she knows about your channel. You know, we watch your channel from time to time. Actually, we watch a oh, lot. This, of- is, this is how you guys get literally, in the movie. We literally sit in bed sometimes. We warm up, warm up, up the bedroom activities by checking out some Playing With Fire videos. Yeah, yeah, just in general, <laughs> not for you. But, you know, your names come up from time to time, too. Um, 
actually because I was talking to her about TRT and the voice deepening and then more plates, more dates to that video mm -hmm. audio and uh, whatever. So she was familiar with your channel and she's she goes out to Miami. I'm actually in Austin at the time on a boot camp, a shadow mm -hmm. shadowing another coach running a boot camp in Austin. And we're about to head into the club. And I was telling her earlier that night, I was like, yo, be careful in Miami because there is a lot of fucking pickup dudes. There's just a lot of guys out there, you know, like, you know, be on, you know, keep your guard up kind of a thing. So I'm out, I'm out at the club. We just did like a little pre-brief before we're going out for the night. I'm sitting in line to go into Bungalow, I think it was in Austin. And we're like three people from the front and I get a FaceTime from my girl. And I answer the FaceTime and literally it's her. And then it's, it's Alex over her shoulder and Austin <laughs> over her shoulder. They both got these like fucking devilish grins on their faces. I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least, at least it's like at the bar. It's not like yeah. in bed or something like that. Right, right. But it was just, um, it was very, I don't know. It was just fucking so coincidental that like yeah. literally that night, I was like, yo, be careful out there. I got a FaceTime from her and it's fucking Alex with playing with fire and, and then Austin Summers. It's like the last thing you want to see when your girl fucking FaceTimes you. But That's pretty true. Although, yeah, well, to be fair, I would say that like, there's no better guy whose hand she could be in because if I know she's a friend true. of mine, like true. there's zero chance I'm gonna try to bang her. True. I mean, okay, I, yeah. you know, like but maybe not the worst guy to be. Do it, I won't. You yeah, maybe not mean? the worst guy to be on the Facetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like me with no ethics, yeah, that's probably like one of the worst. Guys. <laughs> right. Um, so that I mean, that was pretty much the story from my side. And then what she told me later was like when Austin came into the interaction, she was just like. I knew this dude was a pickup guy, like right away. He's just like he's just throwing so many different topics at me. Like guys don't normal guys don't like talk like that. Blah 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 blah. But to, to give to give her credit, um, she she you know it's because she in a situation like that she has to walk a fine line. Like she doesn't want to be a bitch, right? You know, just be like right. some tricks will be like, sorry, I have a boyfriend. Like fuck off, right? Uh, yeah, it rarely happens, but it does happen. And then the yeah. other extreme is obviously like you know flirting hardcore and like you know just being down to fuck us. She 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 was like cool. She was cool. She was friendly. She was like yeah, you know, like friendly flirty, but she wasn't like actively trying to go home with us. So right. yeah, yeah. She was. She's, uh, she's, I could vouch for her behavior. Yeah, she's bubbly but respectful. I would yeah. say, um, which is good, which can be tough sometimes if you're out. You know, it's it's uh you know if you if you're out with a hot girl who's bubbly. It can be somewhat not a challenge, but you know, it's yeah. something you gotta fucking actively monitor and you know educate. Honestly, especially at being a fucking dating coach and a pickup coach, I think the importance of education in a relationship is extremely um, crucial. So something that, something. What's up? What's the dynamic like between you two right now? Dynamic right now is we're dating. We go out. We try to pick up. We have threesomes. Oh. Occasionally, I do my own thing respectfully. That's pretty much where we're at right now. So you have the option of hooking up with other girls. Does she have the option of hooking up with other guys? Technically, no. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, no. She's. Uh, I mean, it. Ha it's it's kind of a fine line, obviously, because like between ethics and equality and feminism yeah. and all this shit, it's like, you know, it's it's a. Uh, it's a kind of a weird dynamic, I would say, but you know, at this point, no, she has not been with another man. We have been with multiple women together and I have been with multiple women alone. So I would say there definitely is compromise on my end. I'm not out here just slaying left and right. I'm just not, but um, you know, I'm also not monogamous. So I'd say there is a balance. There is mm -hmm. somewhat of a compromise, especially in the beginning, given my, profession and you know especially with youtube and everything and you know kind of being under the this microscope or spotlight or whatever the fuck you want to call it so it's it's an ongoing thing it's a it's a work in progress i think you know it takes a lot of time to build trust especially being the fact that i'm a fucking pua that is actively doing boot camps and stuff like that so yeah man there's definitely a dynamic there's definitely a lot of trust patience compromise respect boundaries a lot of discussions that go into making things work like that. But to be fair, coming from a dude that was in a five-year monogamous relationship, I will say every relationship is gonna have its arguments, its boundaries, its communication, its fucking headaches, its fights. It's just a matter of what you're fighting about. So um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's any more of a headache than it is a regular relationship. I would actually say it's less of a headache because there's less resentment, there's more open trust and love and 
yeah, I think that's where we're at right now. So I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, I mean, what you're describing, I think, sounds like the pinnacle of success to like 99% of people who are watching this. I mean, it sounds pretty fucking good to me. I have something somewhat similar. The only difference between what I have and what you have is my girl does have the option to bang other guys. She doesn't do it, but right. she has that option. And if she right. did, I can hold it against her. Uh, that's the one difference. I think um, we're kind of – we're like kind of at that point. She just hasn't acted out on it, and it's kind of like – frowned upon so to speak yeah. kind of like frowned upon don't fucking do this or there's going to be a big fucking problem you know what i'm saying but okay. but yeah, so man, how, my question that i'm leading into this is how do you set this up right awesome so i would say covid actually kind of helped our relationship in a sense that it kind of forced me especially in new jersey like we were in a solid lockdown for at least three to six months. So it actually forced us to hang out more than I think we normally would have if uh, if we hadn't been in COVID times. I'm, I'm actually, we, we talk about this. Like, I wonder if we would be together if we hadn't gone through that COVID outbreak lockdown. But mm-hmm. I'm going to try to not turn this into a long rant. Essentially, what happened, I would say, <laughs> is a, a couple so things. Fauci emails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a couple things were in place, I would say. And this is like good education for anybody that wants to kind of achieve this kind of a relationship. I think mm-hmm. she came into my life and it was already uh, known that I was actively picking up girls, sleeping with girls, you know, going out, picking up women, living that life before we ever hooked up. Okay. We were actually friends for about six months before anything went on. And I think having that friend period allowed me to convey a lot more about myself that I wouldn't have been able to do if I just met up with this girl and went straight out on a date with her because it allows me to show her a big sample of my personality, my lifestyle, my philosophy on life. Um, On top of that, I'm also actively lecturing clients. So she's sitting in on lectures and stuff where I can educate men, but she also gets educated at the same time without me directly having to tell her certain things so i think now, at this point, of, let, let me just take a quick yeah. step back so at this point when she's listening on your lectures are you guys already hooking up or what's the no level? initially we weren't no no so she's just she's just like a fan or what's the no we were just friends i met her through oh, social okay. circles so okay. i i actually met a dude out at a bar um just from going out doing cold approach and i saw him two three times and after the third time I got invited to an after party and it ended up being his after party and me and him just connected. He had a huge social circle that I kind of infiltrated into and became friends with the whole group. And then they saw I was in the pickup and I would go out with a lot of these guys and we would consistently be bringing women back to his place because he lived right next to the venue. And that's how I got close in the social circle. Six months into that, we met as friends and then six months, three to six months after that, we started hanging out as friends. Okay. So, um, this isn't the only way I'm not saying you need to friend zone the girl and then educate her indirectly as a friend. I just think for me being a PUA that runs a fucking YouTube channel, if you want to have fucking infield of yourself, picking up other women online and clearly like living this lifestyle, I think there's an extra layer of trust and an extra layer that that needs to be in place. And being friends first allows you to kind of convey a lot of those things to the girl indirectly, whether that's through friendship, through watching her attending my lectures, through a lot of indirect influence in, in, in education. So I think through all of those things, it's kind of brought us together a little bit. She got to see my philosophy on life and understand that I'm not just out here fucking every single girl to... Um, just to get another layout of it, right? Because if a girl's going to come into your life and actually be with you long term, there needs to be something more than just sex. Okay, so I think by doing all of these things, we were able to build build a certain level of trust, uh, convey a certain level of my lifestyle, my philosophy on life, and and kind of set the right expectation to have a nice foundation to allow things to blossom the way we wanted it to. And of course, there's tweaks along the way for sure. My situation is a, started a bit differently than yours because me and this chick, we just started as fuck buddies and then we kind of evolved from that. So that's personally, typically, actually every relationship I've ever been in, it started as a fuck buddy mm-hmm. and then it kind of built on that. So yep. that's personally what's uh, worked best for me. But let me ask you this question. Yeah. Um, was there ever like, um, you know, like a discussion you had to have with her where you're like, hey, listen, so this is the way it's going to be or how, how do you go about that? 
I think it's been kind of an ongoing thing. It's um, there was never one single talk where it was like, yo, this is how it is. This is how it's going to be. Blah, 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 blah. I would say it's been a series of many conversations throughout the course of a year. And also probably one or two more serious conversations where I actually had to put my foot down and, and say, it's, it's going to be like this or we're not going to be together. And ironically enough, those talks weren't even about me seeing another girl. Those were more so about having a certain level of respect and, and submission from the girl and, and compliance. Can you give uh, me a more detailed example of one of these talks? Pretty yeah, for sure. So um, for those of you that don't know, my girl is a somewhat loud, no, I wouldn't say loud. You, you probably saw a very bubbly, soft side of her, but she, yeah. she's, she's Arabic and nice. she can be, yeah. she's an Arabic woman who can be very loud with an aggressive tonality at times, right? An so, Arabic girl with a Latina booty. Arabic girl, Latina booty. Yes, exactly. And a, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what we'll call her, t her temper or aggression, but um, yeah, man, I think at, at a certain point, it was probably around the six month mark, there was just an ongoing reoccurring thing about the way I felt I was being treated during certain discussions and the way sometimes things would turn into arguments. And I just wasn't getting the level of respect or compliance that I felt was uh, deserved, you know, to be in a relationship with me. Right. So at a certain point, if it, it's about a relationship is about compromises and, and not over compromising yourself. That's how a lot of guys end up getting into a relationship where they're not truly happy or they're not in a relationship that is on their terms. And I really blame it to over compromising. Mm -hmm. And this isn't like from, Agreed. that's what I'm saying. This isn't one talk that we had, bro. This is like, when I say over compromising, I'm talking about mm -hmm. a year of small, mm -hmm. small micro decisions that you made that you gave into, or you didn't put your foot down at the right time. And 0.1% respect was lost from the girl's Which perspective. comes from a lack of willingness to walk away. So that's the biggest thing. Willingness right. to walk away if things don't work out. That's not right. to say you're going to bail the first time of trouble. But as right. like a last resort, you have that option. You're right. like, you know what? Like if I walk away, my life is not going to be over. Which a lot of guys don't have because they right. haven't gotten laid in a while. And they're like, it's either this girl or jerking off. There's no mm -hmm. other options. Yeah. And, and one thing to add on to that, because I think this is such a big topic that, especially with the red pill community, it's like, well, if the girl isn't doing what I want, tell that tell that girl to fucking take a hike. Or if she didn't she didn't uh, she didn't respond to my text in time, the next time we see me, she better be sucking my dick. Or it's it's a no go. Or you just got to cut mm -hmm. it loose, right? And you didn't. And what actually, I have clients that brought this up to me on mentorship. They were like, "Hey, man, I, I hooked up with this girl once or twice. The next time I saw her, she was acting weird. So I pulled back heavy, and now she's not responding. What did I do wrong?" I'm like. Dude, like you're you're listening to these guys that are telling you to like cut cut her off when there's been no emotional investment whatsoever. Like you you hooked up with the girl once or twice, maybe you fucked her a couple times. Like that doesn't mean shit in 2021. Okay, that doesn't mean shit. When I say I'm putting my foot down, this is after months. You know, three, six, nine months um, of seeing them a lot, right, and building up a very high emotional investment, demonstrating a very high level of influence. Uh, demonstrating that if she were to continue to be with me, her life is going to fucking thrive. If she were to have a kid with me, that baby's life is going to thrive. Okay. So it, <laughs> but, it comes out just covered in cats. It, it, <laughs> it, uh, no, not nothing like that. But I mean, demonstrating through man, everything in your life, she needs to see like you're dedicated to something. You're ambitious to something. You're disciplined to something. You're better than 99% of men out there. Like, are you truly the best option for this girl? If you're going to be with a hot fucking girl, like, dude, if I bring my girl out, we were just out last night in Jersey City. Like, I'm not exaggerating. I think she was the hottest girl in the venue, you know? And, and like you said, when you were out at, at uh, Wharf in Miami, Austin was like, this is the hottest girl in the venue. If you guys want to be with the hottest girl in the venue, you better have something going on in your life, man. You better be demonstrating to that girl, like, you're better than most men. And she better be able to admire you for something. Like she better see you as that guy. Otherwise, why the f why the fuck is she with you? Am I allowed to curse this much? Yeah, yeah you can curse as much as you want. Okay. But let, me, let me just quickly touch on what you said because I think a lot of guys, and I agree with you, but I think a lot of guys can misinterpret this. So what you're not saying is you're not saying that you should be proving to herself why you're cool. You're not trying to qualify, prove yourself to the girl. It's you're legitimately a cool, awesome option that she sees. Mm -hmm. but it's not because you're like constantly trying to, you're like, yo, babe, I made $20,000 today. Like, oh, right. 
did you see the pump I got the gym? Look, I look good, right? <laughs> I look good, right? Right. So this this can be uh, taken uh, incorrectly, but yeah, I definitely see your point, um, for sure. For yeah, sure. yeah. Um, so it's, it's not so yeah. It's not about proving yourself to the girl. It's about being that dude. And man, there's so much that goes into that. I don't even want to turn this into a three hour talk about that. But no. right, I will touch on the red pill thing. I do think that a lot of the red pill guys they really really don't understand the power of good communication. They actually they don't even really believe in communication. I think I um, agree. Most of, most vast majority of problems. Okay, as long as you screened. And the girl's not like a low key sociopath. I should call her. She's a cool, normal, you know, chick with good morals and ethics. Assuming that's the case, which should, which you should be doing every time. Mm-hmm. And we're not talking about just sex. We're talking about like anything more. Vast majority of problems can be resolved with good communication. So, let's say your girl comes late, an hour late, right? And you really hate it when people are late. Now. Red Pill community will tell you that that's a power play. And then next time you make plans, you should come an hour late or do something like that. That's not how you solve that problem. You solve that problem by saying, hey, babe, um, I got to be honest. There's something I want to talk to you about. So you were like an hour late and we made plans. And it's not the end of the world, but it really just makes me feel like you don't really value my time. Mm -hmm. That is how you solve that problem. And 99% of the time, it won't happen again if you do like that. But again, the Red Pill community doesn't understand really the power of good, clear communication. They think that everything's like a shit test and then you either have to like put her in a place or you have to like, you know, be an hour late yourself. And right. that's just not an effective strategy. Like you're just going to create way more headache for yourself. So again, I just think most problems can be resolved with clear, good communication, assuming the person that you're dealing with is a normal, ethical human being. Yeah. And, and one other thing on that topic, I totally agree with what you're saying, by the way. Communication, hands down, is the most important thing. One thousand percent. I really think that is the most powerful part of getting a girl and, and keeping a girl. Aside from that, though, I will say the other thing is um, leading by demonstration with what you value and what you want out of it. So if it's a problem that she's an hour late, I shouldn't be showing up an hour late or constantly late either. But just to give you an example, like with what I was talking about, my girl has a very she can raise her tone aggressively sometimes. And if I were to reciprocate, it would turn into a very big fight very quickly. Okay. So when it's a problem for me that she's raising her voice or I feel disrespected in the conversation, those are the times where you really need to be a stoic grounded man that can lead by example, that can not be emotionally swayed by her throwing those little BS emotional jabs at you and stay calm, stay cool, point out, listen, remember what I've been telling you about with your, with your tonality and how you're getting aggressive You're doing it again right now. And I'm just really just trying to communicate with you. And honestly, you're making it very hard to communicate. And this is something that is really turning me off in the relationship. That's been a repeated pattern. Okay. So that's how you kind of lead by demonstration with whatever you want in the relationship. Okay. And then back to my bigger part that I was talking about earlier about, you know, putting your foot down and truly walking away. That's after you've made these points several. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, and you're, being no, disrespectful. No, no. But it's it's always, I guess the point I'm trying to make is the ability to walk away. It's always an option. It's not the first option, it's not the second option, but it is an option if all else fails. And because it is an option if all else fails, plan A and plan B are going to be more effective because the girl can sense that, hey, this guy isn't just going to go along with what I say. Mm-hmm. If I don't work with him here, he is going to walk away ultimately. Yep. And so plan A will be more effective if plan D is walking away. Mm-hmm. That's the and, and she needs to know that you can go out and, and get another hot girl, if not hotter. She needs to at least know, at least think that. OK, if she doesn't think that she knows she can own you, she knows she's the best thing that she's got going for you. That's another reason I actually kind of I'm not encouraging everybody to like sleep around a lot, but. I think oh, yeah. at some point in the interaction, I definitely think so. I, I don't know about everybody, but I think for I think except, people, except our mothers, I think I think a we higher percentage than people admit for sure. But I wouldn't say it's for everybody, but I think it's it's for a lot, a way bigger percentage of people than there are claiming it right now. So all I'm trying to say though is triggering pre-selection within the girl is a very big part. Even if you're in a monogamous relationship, I think you should be able to go out and display that there are women attracted to me. Maybe you have a certain boundary with your relationship. Respect the boundary, but communicate to set that boundary. But yeah, man, I think triggering pre-selection to show the girl that, hey, I can do this 
and you can be replaced. I don't want to replace you. I think we have an amazing thing going. I think you're actually better than like 99.99% of girls um, for me. And we have an amazing connection. I'm excited to see where this goes. But at the end of the day, I'm still number one in my life. And I have to respect number one at all costs. So if, if it needs to go to that level, it will go to that level. You know, and there have been several times where it's been very close to being at that level where I'm sitting there, um, girls at my knees crying. You know, it got to a point where she's literally sitting there at my knees crying. And I'm like, this shit's over. This shit's over if this doesn't change. And you, and I'm just I was like, Instagram story. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm actually, I don't, I don't even talk about this shit, honestly. I'm very humble and no, I, got you, I try yeah. not to make any of this stuff too public or anything like that. Yeah, but yeah. I'm trying to make it practical for guys that are getting into no, relationships no, but this, that are this, trying this, to set this, boundaries. This is great information. Yeah, that's yeah. why we want to kind of deep yeah. dive with you into this. But so to kind of change gears a little bit, I want to ask this question. Sure. Um, what are some recent epiphanies you've had with games? So like, you know, like with me personally, I can tell you in the last year, while I learned most of the stuff that I learned, you know, four or five years ago, there's mm -hmm. still been some recent innovations in the last year. What have been some recent innovations for you? Yeah, I would say calibrating to the girl and her background and where she's at and her upbringing and everything to, to accurately game that girl. To, just to give you an example. So I was just in Miami, right? And Miami is like almost an extreme example, right? They have extremely foreign girls that are like fresh off the boat that just got there uh, in your case, like that one girl I just saw in your infield, who's an au pair. Um, you also have girls that were the hottest girls growing up in the USA and they always mm -hmm. wanted to move to Miami and they've been super dolled up. They even got work done. They got mm -hmm. guys throwing them, inviting them to yacht parties and shit like that. So there's a very big spectrum of women and their upbringing and where they currently live and how they're used to being treated. And I would say that um, not even necessarily in relation to their hotness. It's more so their lifestyle and their upbringing that um, certain girls, like you just can't go up to and say, hey, I thought you were cute. I wanted to come meet you, you know? Yeah. Uh, certain, but certain girls that are equally as hot will fucking melt to that that kind of an open, you know, if it's delivered right. So, and not even just the open in general, I'm just talking about the way you run the interaction, the way the, the connection's built, the amount of teasing or pushing away or disqualifying versus the amount of comfort and connection building. So there's a lot that I'm talking about. Here. There's a bunch of different topics. I think I just kind of mentioned, but let's, let's expand on this one more. Cause it's interesting. So in those, with those girls, how would you spot that that's the kind of girl that that approach won't work with? And then what kind of approach would work with a girl like that? Gotcha. So I wouldn't say I can just look at the girl and instantly tell you, you really can't. And that's a good reason why you should always go and approach because you don't know who the fuck the girl is until you actually say hi. Like I was just doing a day game session with a client in Brickle, uh, same place you were doing the infield, right? And there was a girl that was in front of us and I was like, go open that girl. And he was like, nah, that's not really my type. I want a hotter girl, blah, 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 blah. I was like, dude, she's fucking cute. He's walking away though. So like, we haven't really no. seen this girl, but he's like, he's like, I could just tell it's not, it's not really my type. And just by luck, she just happened to be like kind of, lost so she just turned around and started walking past us and this girl had a gorgeous face and a night and a nice set so right when she walked past we both looked at each other and he was like okay yeah like maybe you're you're right i should go up and <laughs> approach the girl so he did and um it wasn't until actually i heard the audio interaction later that turns out the girl just recently got here from a different country. Her English was pretty good. Some very, very similar girl to in your infield. Like, I don't think she was all pair, but- You motherfucker said that my girl. <laughs> from my it, wasn't, it wasn't the same girl to be fair. But um, yeah, I, I would say it's just a different game. Like with those kind of girls, I'd say I would, I would do a little less pushy, uh, a, a little bit more just genuine, grounded, get to know you connection building. Mm -hmm. and sprinkling in just a little bit of intent with those girls. I actually thought the way you, you ran your infield was very spot on um, yeah. with, that, with that kind of a girl, you. you know? So, but that kind of game wouldn't, I don't think that would be as effective with a different girl that maybe is a little bit more Americanized who kind of grew up being the hot girl. And in that case, I don't think I would have transitioned into comfort as quick. It would be a little bit more playful, cocky, funny, maybe push away kind of thing, disqualified, this blah, 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 like that kind mm -hmm. of a sense. So um, yeah, that's something I've been kind of noticing 
more as I'm traveling because I just I was just in Austin, then I was in Charlotte, and then I was just in Miami, and now I'm back in Jersey. So it's interesting, I guess, because before that I always just did game in like New York and New Jersey. Mm-hmm. So it's um it's been interesting. I spent the last I was I did five days in a row in Miami just going after like super hot women and um yeah I just noticed I noticed the difference between the culture girls the American girls their upbringing and how they they respond based on how society has responded to them their entire lives. So basically calibrating your game based on the type of girl you're talking to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Prince out with the Prince out with the five dollars super chat. What's up? <laughs> What's up, Prince? Oh, Prince, he's a good man. Uh, what are some other epiphanies you've had? Um, other epiphanies. Um, I'd say I just had a, a new epiphany in terms of threesomes and picking up girls with okay. my girl. Um, here. Yeah. So what what we realized was, ironically enough, um, she she actually just walked in. Can you actually put the dog downstairs? Um, <laughs> can say hi to Alex if you want to. So, hey, babe. <laughs> so, oh, God, no, see. <laughs> so, um, oh yeah, what did we know? What did we learn from doing this recently? I think one thing we found was that essentially, if you're running threesome game and you're trying to pick up a girl at the bar, one thing that we noticed that was kind of messed up in our relationship dynamic was that she would go into the interaction and if I if I were to come in after her or if she one of us goes in, opens, the other one comes in after, you know, maybe 30 seconds or a minute into wow. the interaction. Mm-hmm. I would say the main thing that we've been trying to focus on to do more of is like have her hype me up more, mm-hmm. keep putting the attention back on me because she's very she's a big personality. She's very open and friendly and she gets a lot of attention from girls, but that's good if you want to just socialize and be friendly and make a lot of friends. If you actually want to like fuck this girl and bring this girl home, there needs to be a sexual dynamic between the three of you guys. And oftentimes the girl is looking for approval from the girlfriend to give her the green light that it's okay. Sure. You know what she I'm saying? Stuff on toast. Right. Exactly. So I think that needs to be even more clear. Um, especially if like, you know, I think we're a tra- we're a very attractive couple if we're going out at the club. So I think I've it needs to be. Even- <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think that needs to be even more clear. And then one other thing I think we need to be focusing on is her just sexually escalating with the girl mm-hmm. early on because I-, I don't think it's something that she's used to doing in terms of cold approach. Like, actually, she's never done it. So it's uh it's been kind of a learning experience as of late. So that's something we're kind of like actively working on approaching, having her escalate a little bit more, bringing the sexual um, attention onto me, giving the green light to the girl and then having like a mutual escalation, which we actually happen to have one. We actually went to 11 in like, I think it was the Sunday before we talked, we, we met some girl out there. Uh, it was a mixed set. It was cute girl, less attractive friend and some dude. So she goes into the interaction, opens, starts dancing. I briefly momentarily came in after that, said what's up to the dude, vibing with the three of them. We all got a drink. We kind of created a party environment between the whole group. And then at some point she starts dancing on the target. I'm dancing behind her. We switch. Then it's kind of like a sandwich dance. We're still talking to the other people. Um, Turns out the dude wasn't even with them. He ends up leaving at some point. And then me and her moved over and then isolated her back over and again, dude, it's just about giving the target the green light to be okay to escalate on me. Like she needs to see that it's okay. Otherwise, you know, she just she doesn't want to be the the judged slut that's trying to hook up with some girl's boyfriend. You know what I'm saying? So it's a matter of like having a mutual green light. We're all dancing. They kiss. Me and my girl kiss, and then we kiss, and then from there it can build up. So it's uh, how did that one end? We actually didn't keep going with it because we were there strictly for a boot camp. So oh. we pulled away from that one. And then we had a bunch of more experiences where I was actually trying to train her how to um, I was trying to train her how to run a boot camp with a client. So I would go into the interaction. She would come into the interaction to keep the set alive. And I would be the chode beta guy that kind of like lets the interaction die. And then she has to like revive the interaction, get the girl engaged and bring the attention back onto the client. 
And we did that like three, four times as practice because, you know, if I'm running a boot camp, we'll have some guys, maybe they have approach anxiety or maybe they can't keep the interaction going. We'll throw them into the set. A minute later, she comes into the interaction to keep the vibe up, to give the guy a longer experience in the set. But again, her problem is taking the attention away from the right. dude. She had, we had to actively practice the skill set of like, oh, you like to dance? John loves to dance. I just saw him dancing earlier. Yo, dude, weren't you? And like constantly bringing the dude back into it. So that was um, that was that night. But very interesting. I thought it was a pretty big learning experience. So uh, since then, we've been trying to go out and implement some of that stuff. So yeah. it's been uh, it's been exciting. It's it's fun to go out with a dude. Like for anybody watching this, man, I hope you guys can experience getting a hot, cool girl into your life that's willing to go out with you talk pickup strategy, interact with girls, have some fucking debrief, talk about like the theory behind it all and, and hook up with girls and fuck girls together. You know, I would preface this by saying though, uh, make sure it's a girl you're banging. Cause a lot of guys have this illusion. Like I get this question all the time. Uh, I met this girl, but you know, should I, should I try to hit on her? She's attractive. Or should I try to social circle her? Dude, bang the chick. Like, you, like the, the, a lot of guys have this fantasy that some chick who they're not even banging is going to be going out and actively helping them get laid and that can happen in the blue moon but the vast majority of the time it's going to be a girl who you're already having sex with it's yeah. not going to be some random chick who's just friends with you uh yeah so i'll um, preface it with i that. agree i agree for sure two uh, two little epiphanies i've had recently in the last year was one of them is uh for day game don't go out so early so instead of going out like 3 4 p.m doing day game at 8 p.m just the timing because 8 p.m., on average, I have way better success rate than 3 p.m. Because Basically. people are more social. Uh, they're not quite in party mode yet, but they're about to be. Maybe they just finished dinner. They're not in a rush. So I've just had just literally moving the timing a little bit forward. I've had yep. better success. That's the first thing. The second thing is um, not being so, um, so quick to dismiss group sets. Uh, I would occasionally approach group sets. I mean, I've always approached group sets, but I would just like – really heavily prioritize girls for by themselves. And I still do because girls by themselves are easier. Mm -hmm. But like I've recently just had a lot of successes with girls who are with big groups of friends when I just yeah. isolate. Them. So now I'm at a point where like I try not to let that dissuade me at all. Like if a girl's with five friends, I'll still like – I don't try to like put her low on the priority scale than, for example, you know, some other chick, right? I'm like, nope, still can happen. So those yeah. are like kind of like the two, uh, two little ones I've had recently. I would say for the group thing, especially if you're like you're a cool, charismatic dude, like sometimes approaching a big group can can be easier because it's like more more than likely if you go up with a good vibe, somebody in the group's gonna be open and receptive to you and you can kind of like work your way into the group as well. It's almost like I can show my charisma and my confidence almost indirectly without even blatantly talking to the target yet. So um the more the group likes you too, the more you got going for yourself. So it's situational, but yeah, I mean, yeah. dude, I'm laughing because it reminds me like two weekends ago, we were out and there was like four chicks, right? One, there's one chick in the group who's like really my type, like my eight or my nine. And mm -hmm. the rest were just like, they're fun. They're average, right? I approach and I show a 10 for the eight or nine, but one of the chicks in the group was like 5.56. Yeah. Like, she wasn't bad. I think most guys would fuck her, but it wouldn't be the kind of girl you would brag about. Like really starts hitting on me, like hard, yeah. where she yeah. puts her arm around me. Yeah. And she's hitting on me so hard that the girl who I'm trying to hit on like takes a step back because she doesn't mm -hmm. want to like you know fuck over her friend. Yeah, I'm like ah, oh, now I'm in like this sticky situation. But this chick is like all over me. Like she's like like within like she's making out with me within 30 seconds. And I'm like eh, whatever. Uh, so I'm kind of fucking around. <laughs> yeah, whatever, with I'll go with it. <laughs> after a few minutes, I'm like yeah. trying to trying to like get back into hitting on the friend, and then she yeah. tries to make me jealous by trying to make out by trying to hit on my friends. But of course I'm. Like my friends are cool. They're not gonna fuck me. Like we're not gonna we're not gonna fuck each other over mm -hmm. under any circumstance. So none of them are gonna like actually hit on her, right? So then she's like denied validation. So then she like comes back to me even harder. At this point, I'm like, do I do I pull this chick? Do I not pull this chick? Like she's bangable, but that's kind of right, in my mind. So yeah, it's like the one one thing that could potentially happen with group sets. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this question. So um, before we take some Q and A. Yeah. What are the next ways you plan on leveling up to increase your success with women? Um, coaching, believe it or not. I was just on a five-day boot camp. I hired a coach that mentored me. 
that's what I do for to get better. Who, with who was it, if you don't mind sharing? RSD Madison. I was working with Madison. I was on a boot camp with Madison. I feel like you're way better than Madison, though. I, I mean, Madison's been in the game for 15 years. He's done six world tours, and he's pretty much been gaming since I was, what, 16 years old? So, um, if you guys were having some pickup competition and I had to bet $10,000, I would hands down bet it on you. Like it wouldn't even be close. Really interesting. Okay. Even, even if you had a handicap, even if it was like you had to get twice as many girls than him to win, like unless the handicap was crazy, even with like a 50% candy cap, I would still bet on you to be honest. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was actually, um, I was very impressed with his skill set. Okay. I was very impressed. I mean, granted, I do need to play the student role uh, when I'm working with a coach, which was in it's itself a little bit of a mind fuck, but yeah, um, yeah. I, I was still definitely impressed with this skill set. Don't underestimate him by any means. Hmm. Um, that's So that's one thing I would say is just getting coaching, hiring mentors. I spend more money on coaching than my clients spend on coaching. Okay. I, I pay coaches to get mentored, to learn from guys that are more experienced than I am for everything, for my business, for fitness, for goals with women and dating, find somebody that has achieved what you want in that field and learn from them. Okay. That's like, I know I, I probably sound like a salesy because I, I pitch my own mentorship a lot, but honestly, guys, like I spend more money on mentorship, getting coached, getting mentored than you guys do. So let That's that- really interesting you say that. What, what are some other, uh, let's expand on this. What are some other types of coaching that you do? That I, you do that? yeah, I have a business coach. I have a business coach that's helped me scale my business at um, probably 3x or 4x my income in the last six months. Mm. How did yeah. you find the business coach? How did I find him? Yeah. Uh, he did. He achieved. This is ex what I'm saying. He achieved exactly what I'm trying to achieve in my industry. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's the same concept with anything else. Hire guys that have accomplished what you want to accomplish in whatever desired field. Okay. So for me personally, this dude had accomplished making multiple seven figures in the dating industry already. Okay. So if that was who, if I'm trying to make, you know, obviously I want to be a successful dude. I felt it would be ideal to hire him to show me the step-by-step -step process, how he achieved what I want in the same field. So that's mm -hmm. why I hired him and I paid top dollar to get that premium coaching and that one-on-one -on -one exclusivity for my business. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's interesting you say that because I, I do like a variation of what you're doing. So like, for example, me personally, I go to a hypnotherapist once every two weeks. Dope. And, uh, he puts me under hypnotherapy and it Dope. reprograms your subconscious. So he like, uh, it's really interesting what he does, but uh, yeah. I actually took a big break from working with him, but now I'm working with him again. So he puts me under hypnosis. He gets me to say my limiting beliefs and then he reprograms it. So he'll say, while you're in a state of hypnosis. Now, it's not like 100%, but I do think it makes a subtle difference if you do it like continuously. For sure. Uh, Wait, was it was it Marcel by chance or no? No, it's just, his name is Esteban. Gotcha. Yeah, that was something I always considered. Never did it, though. Uh, I feel like it's been increasing in popularity. It's interesting. It definitely, you have to go to the right person. Um, it can't be like some random Joe Schmo. Like, this guy's quite skilled. Yeah. Um, cause it's also pretty hard to put me in hypnosis just cause I'm a mind fuck. You're right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I do some things like that. Like I go to, um, like I do try to find the best people, but for me, what I typically do is cause I'm in a unique position where I can do trades. A lot of people want help with their Tinder. So I can trade a lot of guys who are good with marketing for like Tinder trades. So I do a lot of trades like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I do. I definitely agree with the concept of, um, of like getting people better than you and to kind of um, expand. I think the problem a lot of guys run into is they don't know who to trust. Mm -hmm. Because you yeah. have, especially in our niche, like think about it, you have so many guys on YouTube, right? You have so many coaches. A lot of them are saying contrasting things. So it's not like, it's not like, you know, it's not like medicine, even with medicine can be confusing, but it's not like physics, right? Where you have physics textbook and there's like mainstream theory where everything is like fact. Like if you disagree with this, then you're just not being scientific. Right. It's not like that with pickup. There's like different schools of thought, different theories, um, you know, all the shit. And I think also you got a lot of people who are just completely bullshitting about their results and success rate. Um, you know, I, <laughs> there's one coach fucking what's his name? MLB, MDL. He was kept, he literally had a thing where he said, I'm the best coach in the world by far. And I was listening to that and I was like, well, I'm 100 times better than you. 
And I wouldn't say I'm the best coach by far. I'm pretty good at right. some things, but I wouldn't say I'm the best by far. So it's just like you have like a lot of ridiculous marketing claims. So I guess it's like it's hard for I think for some people to figure out who they can trust. Yeah, for sure, dude. It's um, it's also an ego thing. I think a lot of guys don't want to admit that they need help or they don't want to. They, I don't know. For some reason, they don't like the idea of spending money on getting coaching and belittling themselves to, to yeah. another man. You know, so that was something. I don't know. Maybe it's just growing up without a father figure. I, I always knew instinctively I would have to learn from other people. You know, and I've, I've taught myself a lot. I studied a lot. But um, one thing I learned probably over the last two years was the concept of hiring mentors and, and learning, paying money to get some skin in the game, to get some leverage, right. to learn from somebody who's been through what you've been through to show you step by step how to achieve that thing. So is it an ego thing for some guys? Yeah, I for think that's like, yeah. yeah, for some guys, it's an ego thing. For some guys, it's maybe the trust thing and, and not yeah. um, finding a genuine, authentic dude that's like actually reliable or has like, I feel like everybody has bad reviews at some point yeah. on, on some kind of Google. Well, I feel like thing, picking you know, a coach requires a little bit of a leap of faith. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Because it's, it's not like you're paying after you get good, right? You're paying. Right. And it's the same thing with me. Like you're paying for my product before. It's not like you get my product and if I get you laid on Tinder, then you can pay me. No, that's not how it works, right? Right. For, for obvious reasons. So I feel like any amount of it, it just requires a little bit of a leap of faith. So that's what, what I think um, is hard for people. But that's good. That's why it's good to have like word of mouth and like I can tell you're a genuine dude. Like I would have no qualms about recommending you know one of my clients to you. Like not nah, right. right. Um, yeah. Another oh, yeah. thing about the another thing about the cash though is like, dude, you use that investment as leverage. It's like, okay, well, I put some money down. Now I need to take action. I need to do this because I spent this much money. And also, if, if you're talking about mm. dating and women, understand it's still on you at the end of the day. You know, just because you paid Kyle or Alex money does not mean you're obligated to get results. Like we're not, we're not just gonna fucking snap our fingers and then the girl just appears in your bed. Like you still need to do work. Yeah, we'll show you. That's, that's the premium that. package. You have to pay extra for that. The snapping the <laughs> fingers the thing. 2025. That's a that's the next thing yeah. we got coming up is we'll game for you. <laughs> Put a chip in your brain and we'll game for you. That that'd be cool, actually. But. Well, actually, you know, it's funny you say that because a lot of guys what they want is Tinder takeovers where they give us our the um the login and we literally set up fuck dates for them. So interesting. We used to do more stuff like that. We just, I just don't have the time for that. Like, even though it pays really well, I just don't have the time to be juggling a bunch of different tenders. Um, but yeah, it was like a thing we used to do for some clients where like you pay us whatever, a few thousand a month and we just <laughs> order Google straight to your <laughs> I mean, that's the closest thing you could do to uh, snapping your fingers and having the girl at your house. That's funny as hell. But even Pretty still, much. even still to get those girls to appear at your house, they're still going to have to go through, run the date, learn the escalation and, 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 Learn if, how to if, if we set it up, if we sex the girls and it's straight to the house, at this point, they just have to show up, not have a fucking panic attack, and what they get that, and they'll probably close. At that point, it's like they don't really have to do that much. And okay. but sometimes they'll still even fuck it up, but uh, most of the time, they'll be able to do it. Um, yeah. But I guess to kind of go back to the original question, so uh, the one, what, so kind of in terms of me, what I'm thinking in terms of leveling up my success. So the way I kind of look at myself is like. I'm sure there's still things I have to I, – not, not I'm sure. I know there's things I can still learn from game. But I feel like it's – at this point for me, it's diminishing returns. Mm -hmm. Like I can spend three, four months improving my game and going out continuously, and maybe they'll give me 10 15% more success with women. You know, yeah. I, I feel like that's – I don't know. I wouldn't say it's fully maxed out, but it's like it's getting in that upper tier. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, at this point, personally, the things that I'm working out are fitness – I do feel like that I can really still max out. Mm -hmm. um, hair hair gains. I mean, hey. not too bad, but yeah. I, I do want to do a transplant soon. That So SMB-related stuff. And the third thing is uh, uh, cloud-based stuff. So I want to get a podcast when I hit 100K. And mm -hmm. then I think like having a dope platform that everyone knows me for, that will yeah. also like give me a lot of like groupies and shit. So those are kind of the three things that I have planned the next year. Uh, so that, that's, that was kind of the question. What, what are those things for you? I mean, dude, I totally agree with that pod podcast idea. Not not me per se, although a lot of guys are like, dude, start a podcast. I would listen to you all day, Kyle. You but, definitely should. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I, I agree with that idea of just creating a really cool lifestyle that you could bring a girl into where she would genuinely enjoy 
your business. You know, it's almost like your business becomes your lifestyle, which becomes an enjoyable experience for a girl. Um, and it's almost like you got new leads just coming into the funnel without even fucking just doing work. You know, then you're getting you're getting paid, you're getting girls just to run your business, and you're you you, 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 you got to suck dick for the tag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you can set or up can whatever uh, whatever requirements you want. Like so bank um, couch, the bank couch of like podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. yeah, dude. I would say um, their transplant's a good idea. I'm I'm all for it. I'll probably need another one at some point. Oh, you, know, you think so? Doesn't look like it from the the screen, but um, essentially, I've only had hair transplanted to this section of my head. So inevitably, this part of my hair will fall out at some point. So um, I'm doing taking all precautionary measures to slow down or maintain. You ever look into uh, stem cells or exosomes? Yeah, you're talking about PRP injection? Is no, no, I'm not. Uh, that's something different. Like actually, IV exosomes or stem cells. Like stem cell hair transplant? No, like oh. <laughs> like actually taking stem cells and running them through your vein because it regenerates oh. everything. It's not just your oh. hair. It's going to regenerate your skin. Got you. I, I one of the things that will regenerate is your hair as well. I have not done that. I have done several different PRP injections, which essentially is like they take, yeah. they take your blood, they turn yeah, it into a plasma, stem cell, that mm -hmm. shit. Um, have done that. Another thing in the future is they're actually going to be doing – it's not quite there yet, but it's almost there, which is like stem cell hair transplant. They take your donor hair and then they can replicate the donor hair through stem cell reproduction. So you have an infinite amount of donor hair to uh, put into your head because a lot of guys, they have a very small donor area available, which is why you have limited hair that you can transfer currently. But yeah. futuristically speaking, we should have an infinite amount of, of donor hair. But So what they're doing now, because I, I try to stay on the cutting edge of like medicine, um, yeah. you can actually, so PRP is like, it is decent. I think you surprised saw some benefits, but not too much with that. I'm assuming yep. Yep. Yeah. it's like, yep. it's, it's never a game changer, but always helps a little bit. So the next level to that now is instead of doing PRP, they will actually take, uh, umbilical cord stem cells and inject it in your head. And that's going to be like a hundred times more potent or something like that. Interesting. What's it, what's it called? What is this already, um, accessible? So this, oh yeah. This is already accessible. Yeah. At certain clinics for sure in the US. But Sweet. the other option, kind of what I was talking about, and I don't want to go off on too much of a side tangent on this. Yeah, we're, going, we're getting into I, I could nerd out about this. Much, yeah. Well, actually, I'm doing this on Tuesday, is uh, they're taking exosomes, five cc's of exosomes, and just literally running it through an IV into my veins. And that yeah. basically just goes to like any part of your body where like, you know, your skin, your, yep. your organs and everything uh, to help you regenerate. So we'll, we'll awesome. see how that does. But that, dude, that's dope. I'm I'm really big into self preservation and and staying youthful, obviously. So please keep me updated with that. I'll probably well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that more offline. Yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> we can do a whole hair podcast, bro. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's take uh, let's take some questions. Yo, yeah. guys, we're at 160 live viewers. Well, how many likes are we at right now? Let me see. I think we're at like like 30 likes or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, the point I'm making is, yeah, we are at like that. we are at 60 likes. Okay, not too bad, guys. If you're watching this uh, and you're finding value from this, even if you're not, hit the like button. It really helps us. Uh, it helps us, you know, draw more traction, bumps this up in the algorithm. So everyone who's watching this, we have one ask. We have no problem giving you guys a shitload of free value. Just please hit the like button. Um, yep. Okay. With that aside, let's jump into some questions. I think the most valuable infield you could post, and I don't think anyone has done this, would be to show you warming up for a day game session, starting cold, i.e. while experiencing approach anxiety. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. Maybe um, I'll do that. I mean, yeah. I feel like a little self-conscious posting shit where I don't feel like my game is at its best, but I don't even really need to go shoot this. I have this. Like, this, this, yeah. I already have this on my computer <laughs> right now that yeah. I could show it. I mean, sure. I mean, I could show, like, Right now, even possible. No, we'll, we'll save it for another time. But yeah, um, I'll uh, we'll, I'll do another live. I'll share it. So yeah, if you guys really want to see this, I'll, I'll share it. I think I think that would be interesting. Um, I think it's something else to point out is uh, this is kind of like where I'm at in terms of like epiph I guess this ties back into what you were saying about epiphanies and and ep recent epiphanies in game and Love stuff. It. I guess in 2021, and uh, I've kind of been shifting more towards this idea of actually not warming up. And just kind of going right for it, regardless of I'm in state or not in state. And kind of training your brain to the idea of even if I'm not in state, I could still get the hot girl. I think a lot of guys can be dependent on um, 
actually did a collab video with Madison on this that I'm going to be releasing soon because this is like tying back into something I noticed within myself from doing the five day boot camp with him, which which was like we would go out to the club, I would start trying to warm up and socializing. Wait, and, can you? What do you mean when you say warm up? Because I think people, I'm thinking of this differently than you guys are. So what's warming up for you? Um. Well, for me, it's like going into the club, flirting, maybe even attracting or even making out with like 7.5 or an 8, just getting into a social flow, opening a bunch of different people, getting into Wait, a social what, flow. What's game for you then? If making out with an 8 is warming up, what, what the fuck is game for you? Well, that's what I was <laughs> that's, <what I'm> saying. <laughs> that's like game for me. So I'm not, <laughs> we're kind of missing something here. I think, I think that's well, that was something I noticed on the boot camp with Madison, which was um, he was like, dude, you would go into the club and like, you start going for not the hottest girls and you end up like getting these girls, which are attractive girls that most guys would even want in their lives. But it was almost like I kind of created this coach Kyle identity behind being the dude that gets girls consistently. And I think as a result of that, I wouldn't go for the hottest girl in the venue. I would go for like, the cute girl in the venue that I know I can I think get. it's okay because there's always time. Like, you don't always have to pick the hottest girl first. Like, you right. can make your way to it. So I think right. what you're describing is totally okay. Yeah, but I also noticed um, – and I'm not saying this is for everybody. I'm just telling you where I'm at because yeah, we're yeah, talking yeah. about epiphanies. And since this, yeah. we're talking about warming up, right, right. I think this was um, somewhat relevant, which is like I got – I started doing that too much. And mm -hmm. as a result, I would almost walk into the venue and not even look for – Mm. The super hot girl. I would almost look for like the target I know I could get for sure if that was cute. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of um, created this identity behind being that safe, playing it somewhat safe. I mean, mm -hmm. even though it's not safe compared to where most men are, it, for me and myself, though, to push myself to an even higher level, not warming up and just going for the top, top tier. But anyway, that's a little off outside the scope. Yeah. No, just for, for me, warming up. So the way I've always thought about warming up for me is um, I just it, I still approach like the first attractive. So the way I operate is like I have a cutoff, right? Let's say a seven. And below that, I won't approach. Above that, I will approach, right? And then it comes like first scene, first order. So I, if I see a seven and nine, I'll approach the nine. But like if I see the seven, I'm not going to skip her in case I see the nine later. So mm -hmm. I still approach – and it's very similar to, you know, John's uh, whole thing. But I approach, yeah. you know, a girl who, who's above my threshold. Now, um, I know that statistically speaking, my first approach probably won't be as good as like my fourth or fifth approach. It's just like sometimes it is. Sometimes my first approach is spot on. But most of the time I require a few approaches. But I'm still going to try really hard to get the first girl. So that's the way it is for me. I don't believe in doing like any dumb shit. I don't believe in talking to dudes. I don't believe in talking to fat chicks. I don't believe in like doing pushups in the middle of the street. Like I still recommend going for the hot girl. It's just that like I set the expectations for myself pretty low on the first approach. I'm just like, okay, like it's my first approach. Whatever happens, happens. I don't set any, like I need to get this girl's phone number. I need to bang this girl. Like, and I'm okay if it doesn't go down the first approach. Cause I just think of it. Okay. I push myself outside my comfort zone. Right. And then like chances are I'll be warmed up after that. Yep. Yep. For sure. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, everybody's at their own level with their own sticking point in terms of uncomfortableness and social anxiety and approach anxiety or escalation yeah. anxiety, whatever the fuck it is. So, you know, slightly incrementing it out of wherever your comfort zone, um, I think is key, obviously. So really depends on where you're at, but yes. Yeah, oh, so. dude, I, I got to share the story because uh, this is yeah. fucking hilarious. So yeah, one of my closest friends, uh, my buddy Elmar, right? Me and him, we got into game almost around the same time. This is when I was living in LA. It was probably 2013 or something like that. And the one area where him and I disagreed is uh, he would like, when it came to warming up, he would just like talk to anyone. So he was like, no, nah, dude, I'm warming up. So he talked to dudes. He would talk to fat chicks. He would talk to old ladies, right? And I never did that, right? But so anyway, so me and him were out one night. I'll never fucking forget the story. And I saw him, I saw him talking. I saw him talking to some like big black guy, right? And I'm like, okay, he's warming up. And then he they talk, and then I saw him like half an hour later, he's talking to um a group of chicks, and the black guy's there, right? And I'm like, okay, you know, what, whatever happens. And then I see the black guy with the girls and he's leaving. And I'm like, yo, what happened? So he told me the story. So apparently when <laughs> he initially approached the black guy to warm up. And the guy was like kind of a little weirded out by him. He was like, yo, man, nice to meet you. He was just trying to be social. And then uh, later on, 
he was uh, flirting with a two set. It was him and a two set. And the black guy came in and the black guy said to the girls, yo, this guy's a weirdo. He was trying to hit on me earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and the girl was like, oh, you're gay? And my buddy's like, no, no, I'm not gay. He's like, homie, you were just trying to mack on me earlier. He's like, no, I was just warming up. But like, how do you up, I swear. So I have to pick up. So that, like, I'll never forget that shit. Yeah, this guy's weird. He's trying to hit on me earlier. <laughs> I mean, dude, I'm not going to say not to socialize with guys because honestly, like, I think I think you can make a lot of friends if you're going out, especially for like a lot of my clients that they, they don't have too many wings that are into pickup and stuff. I think you can make good friends. Right, right, right. Yeah, just to be clear, I agree with you. I'm not saying yeah. don't socialize with guys. I'm just I'm just right. making, you know using that story. Don't hit. Don't hit. Show, don't yeah, hit make a, make a funny point. Yeah. Um, quickly answer this, Alex. Can you make separate session the forms for discussion on podcast guests? Yes. Uh, you're not the first to suggest that. It's a good idea. So we'll definitely uh, do that. If a chick you're comfortable with, friends with benefits, for example, can make it or cancels for a legit reason, do you just say okay another time then? I mean, kind of depends on where you're at in, in the courtship or the the dating. Like, let me say, if a chick you're comfortable with, okay, so you've been fucking this girl and you're comfortable with this girl, can't make it or cancels for a legit reason, um, okay another time then. I don't know if I would send that exact message, but I think – the idea of like not making it a big deal and just rescheduling is is definitely acceptable if you've been with this girl for a, you know extended period of time. Yeah, I, the the example I gave is treat it as if one of your friends reschedules on you. So if your buddy is like, "Hey man, I'm really sorry, but I gotta work late tonight. Can we do another night?" You'd be like, "What the fuck, bro? You're crossing my boundary." Right? right. You would do that. So I'll kind of treat it kind of like that. Right. Yeah. Now, if you see a pattern, if your buddy's constantly flaking on you, that's an issue. You're like, dude, what the fuck is going on? Like, you do need to address that if there's a pattern. Or your buddy's being disrespectful and, like, for example, you know, canceling on you last minute without giving you an adequate excuse. That, that's a different thing. But if your buddy has a legitimate issue and needs to reschedule, you wouldn't make a big deal out of it. You wouldn't call him out. You'd just be like, yeah, sure, dude, we can hang out another time. So it's, it's the same thing that I think applies to girls. Yep. <clears throat> um, let's quickly address this. If this is too controversial, I understand, but I've been hesitant to address Elmar because of me too. I wouldn't want a girl to make a false accusation due to ASD. Any thoughts? So I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole because it is kind of controversial. Um, there, I will, I will say this. Well, actually, I'll let you answer this question first. <laughs> sure. Um, I would understand. Been hesitant to address. Hesitant to address LMR. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of what does he mean by address? But what? I guess just like deal with it or like point it out. Okay. Um, first thing I'll say is I think LMR is a result of not properly playing the seduction and the escalation. Like mm -hmm. it, it's not about what you did in that moment. It's everything that led up until that moment that gave you the LMR. So maybe go back and reevaluate the whole, the whole seduction, the whole escalation, you know, the expectation that was set going up until that moment that you got the resistance. Okay. Cause it's not about that moment. It's about something that happened before that the girl wasn't fully bought into the idea of sleeping with you. Um, if that's, if you're like, if, especially if you're like hesitant about LMR, I would say go back and analyze the, the seduction and the escalation to get it to a point where there maybe isn't any LMR. Um, mm -hmm. That's one thing I would say. I wouldn't want the girl to make a false accusation. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I think you'd really have to push it for the girl to make a false accusation. But I'm that, I've never encountered that. Um, that. Yeah, I mean, that's my that's my thoughts on the matter. If if you're getting LMR, it's probably something due to what happened during the seduction and the escalation that that mm -hmm. caused that result. You know. Yeah, I would say this. You can never completely eliminate the chance of LMR happening, but you can significantly reduce the likelihood. And a big way to do that is to build a lot of sexual tension. So the more sexual tension you have, the less likely you are to get LMR. Sexual tension and comfort. You have a lot of sexual tension and comfort, the chance of LMR goes down. It's never zero. And whether you're going to get LMR at that point, a lot of it depends on the girl and her culture. Like some chicks, like I don't like to bring race into this shit, but Asian chicks will typically almost always give LMR. Like if they're like five Asians, not Americanized Asians, yeah, almost always. And that's just, just part of the culture. And the reason for that is, you know, I actually used to hook up with this Japanese girl consistently. And what she explained to me, because for when we first started hooking up, she would just do that shit where she just laid there and didn't move at all. I'm like, you know, uh -huh. you can move around, right? Like, we, we, and she's like, really? <laughs> you like that? I'm like, 
yeah, I like it when a girl moves. She's like, oh, Japanese guys don't like that. I was like, what? And she explained Damn. to me that in Japan, guys are into when the girl is like acting like she's not into it. So it's all about like low key rape type of scenario. So in, in Japan, if a girl's like actively enjoying sex, that's actually going to be a turn off to the guys. Interesting. So you can see how that creates a culture of LMR. Yeah. Because the girl sure. feels, even if she really wants to fuck, she feels like if she doesn't give you a little bit of LMR, you're going to get turned off or think she's easy. Right. So again, uh, you know, so you can see how culture can play a role in the amount of LMR that you get. Um, girls will also, you have to be able to discern between playful LMR and real LMR, like where the girl's seriously uncomfortable or she's just being playful. Like, for example, I had a, I had a date last night. It was like a you know, pretty cute Colombian girl. We were on my balcony and then like <laughs> she had like a really fat ass. So I was like pretty hard and I was like rubbing my dick against her. And uh, she's like, oh, what's going on? She's like, despacito, despacito, gringo. But then while she's saying that, she's like pinching my cock, right? So she doesn't really mean for me to slow down, but she's like, right. go with it. Yeah. So you have to be able to discern between that. So I would say those two things. I think that you can also, I'll add one more thing to it. I think some girls, small percentage of girls, they will at some point tell you no, because they want to see how you will react to that. And if you are cool and you can back off, you earn that final level of trust. And once you have that final level of trust, they will have sex. I've had situations where the girl literally said, I don't want to have sex one minute before we had sex. But like, I, I'm like, okay, that's totally fine. And I stopped and she saw I was willing to stop. She's like, you're cool with that? I'm like, if you don't want to, you don't want to. Well, you know, let's do it. Right? And literally within 30 seconds. Most of the time it takes a few minutes, but because the girl wants to see if you're the kind of guy that will actually respect her decision. Which you obviously always should. You should never, under no condition, obviously, you know, push past the girls, you know, no. But sometimes just taking a step back and then trying again a little bit later is all you need to do, right? So I think there's a bunch of things you can do without actually, I think that you get into the, you know, possible Me Too stuff is if you're pressuring the girl mm -hmm. or making her do something that she's not comfortable with or if she's wasted. Like I will not, under any circumstance, being a wasted girl, right? even if she's like super down. But as long as you avoid all that and you're not pressuring her, um, it shouldn't happen. Yeah, I think those are the two biggest things. It's not, I could see accusations happening if there's extreme intoxication or the other thing is just not calibrating during the escalation. And and um, that's it, man. Let, let's keep it moving. Actually, what, let me just add one more thing to this. Another another way that could happen is if you're too crass after sex. So I have seen I have seen potential like that happen is after you bang, you're rude or you kick the girl out. So mm -hmm. my general policy, if I have sex with a girl, I will at the very always let her hang out as long as she needs to within reason. So don't do the stuff where you bang a girl and you kick her out or whatever. Like that, that is how you get like the me too stuff. Mm -hmm. Really. Like yeah. if she feels used and shit after sex. So always like I'll cuddle with a girl, I'll chill with her, and then I'll send her a text saying, I had fun with you, right? Just by doing these small things. Yeah. So it's not even the, the last minute resistance. It's the post minute. Post, post minute resistance. Yeah, yeah. I just joined the mastermind recently. I barely get any match on Tinder. How do I improve my profile? So post a screenshot of your uh, profile in the mastermind group and I'll take a look, man. Uh, okay. Hey, Professor Kyle, I'm Brazilian. I think your content is really awesome. Send a hug to your fans in Brazil. Come on. Shout out to my Brazilian audience. <laughs> Got a lot of guys in Brazil. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, tips for when girls doubt your dominance frame in the bedroom and call you fake dom. <laughs> the girl clearly like dominant guys, but it's very testy. So she's a brat. So yeah. what are your thoughts on that? I actually encountered an experience with this. Not in the bedroom, though, because typically I feel like this is handled before you're in the bedroom, unless you have the date set up maybe right at your house. But the instance in particular for me was <laughs> pick up at the club. Um, met this girl, vibe. Going well, we're probably 30 minutes into the interaction. Actually, probably longer than that. Maybe like 45 minutes into the interaction. Figured out the logistics. She's down to leave her friends and come with me. We're leaving the venue. We're at the exit of the venue. I, this was an infield that was posted on my, on my channel for a little while before it was taken down. We're mm -hmm. about to walk out of the venue. And she goes, before we leave, how freaky are you? And she's <laughs> looking me dead in the eyes, which was like, I thought it was such a like, in, in the moment, I thought it was such a dumb question, honestly, but this is literally what she was screening me for. It was like, are you a fake dom? Are you this fucking like cocky dude at the club? Or like, are you, are you really this masculine dude? 
She's hit me with like some final shit test as we're at the fucking door of the venue. She's like, I was like, what do you mean? She was like, we're not, uh, what did she say? She's like, how freaky are you? Uh, fuck. What did, what did she say after that? I was like, oh, she goes, well, I'm not, I'm not coming home with you if you're not freaky enough. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think it was just kind of like a final shit test of how did you handle that? Are you going to cave in? Are you going to like try to prove yourself to me? Are you going to blah, 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 blah. What do you like, you know, how are you going to handle this situation? You know, cause I feel like some guys maybe would try to be freaky or aggressive in that moment to show they are that guy. Other right. guys would like logically try to prove themselves. Right, right, right. Uh, other guys would probably have like funny, nervous laugh if they're really right. not that guy mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. I just kind of was like unreactive, had a moment of seriousness where I looked her in her eyes and I was like, I don't think you would be here right now if you felt that way I, or something like that. I don't know. Like I just had a, a moment of realness and just kind of like dominate her with your eye contact and your tonality at that point. And then I didn't even really engage in that thing. I said that she laughed and I was like, put your jacket on. And then we just, I just led to the door. And then, um, and ironically enough, there was no LMR at the house because Again, a lot of the LMR stuff is handled during the pickup and during the interaction, you know, and, and, and the comfort and connection. So it's a lot of those things. Yeah, I, I think you answered this quickly. Uh, I mean, you, you answered this well. I get the fake dumps um, thing actually somewhat often because. Really? Yeah, because, and I understand why, because I. Okay. You run the, the sexual. I'm a very dominant guy, which I actually am. But I'm also yeah. my personality, non sexually, I'm very goofy and I make a lot of jokes. It's mm -hmm. I'm like very lighthearted. So I don't carry myself the way a lot of quote unquote doms carry themselves. So in a girl's mind, she's like, well, he doesn't act like the other doms I've met because they're more like serious and like kind of like scowling and shit. And that's mm -hmm. not me. But um, how do I handle it? I don't know. I usually, yeah, kind of like what you did. I call, I just like look at the girl in the eye. I'm like, really? Are you doubting my domness right now? And then like the girl will be like, well, maybe a little bit. And I'll just like take my hand and like pull her a little bit like, really? So stuff like that. But yeah, just keep your cool. Don't qualify yourself. It's that um, it's just having that moment of seriousness, realness with that sexual masculinity. Just you got to display that, you know, at some point. Right. In the context of social game, do y'all enjoy being the center of attention? Sometimes I get a lot of attention as the new guy at a party or something. I don't know how to deal with it. Me personally, I do enjoy being the center of attention. Me too. <laughs> being an only child, I think. Yeah. I, I like it too, honestly. Um uh, he says, I don't know how to deal with it. I mean, how, how to deal Enjoy. with a lot of attention? I would say, I don't know. Be be a good conversationalist. Uh, engage with a lot of people. Tease, maybe push away the, ta the target that you're interested in. Um, keep everybody engaged. I'm kind of aloof if I'm talking to like a lot of people and the hot girls there. So I, he says, I don't know how to deal with that. I mean, I would say just have fun. Just enjoy it. Yeah. Unless it's something you really don't enjoy. The only thing you should not do is start bragging. So people are like, like, for example, people will be like, yo, Alex, he's a fucking pimp. You know, he's banged all these chicks from Tinder. I'm not going to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm a fucking pimp. I'm banging. Like, I won't do that. I'll be like, oh, stop. You, I'm a virgin. Like, especially if there's new girls around, I'm not going to start like, you know, just so mm -hmm. don't start bragging because no one likes people who brag. But aside from that, it's pretty straightforward. Yep. Um, yep. Sure. Coach Kyle, what do you think of us? Do you see, do you see potential? Do you, do you, are we all... Do we all sound like virgins? What do I, th what, the, the comment section? No, I mean, do you see potential or do we all sound like virgins? <laughs> That's funny. I mean, look, man, I, I was just like you guys not that long ago watching fucking PUAs on YouTube. Literally, that was me. Okay, like I studied this. I hired mentors. I got coaching from the guys that I resonated with on YouTube. And I still do. And I continue, I will continue to get coaching throughout my journey. Okay. It, uh, I think mentorship is, is huge. I think if you get the right coaching from the right people and can execute success is inevitable. Okay. With anything you follow a step-by-step -step system that has been proven to work and have somebody to hold you accountable that can critique you in that field. I think success is inevitable if you stay consistent with it. So do I see potential? Absolutely. Everybody has fucking potential, dude. I didn't have a date. I didn't go to the high school prom. I, Dude, I should post a picture of me like right now. I look like a fucking faggot, straight up, straight up. Um, so yeah, if I, if I could do it, I don't see why anybody can't do it. It's just a matter of like how bad do you actually want it? You know, I, I don't think a lot of the guys actually want it. So 
You got to yeah, fucking it. Really depends on the person. Depends on um, their work ethic and how bad do they want it. That's a huge factor. And their uh, limiting beliefs and how much they're going to allow their limiting beliefs to dictate the rest of their lives. I think those are the two biggest factors. Uh, yep. So it really depends on the person. But I've had clients who are get more goals than I do now. Like, multiple times. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean they have more time on their hands, but like still, like they're they're they're, they're sleeping with more girls every month than I am, right? Yeah. When initially they were like not able to get laid at all, so right. I've, right. I've had many of those stories. I mean, it's not it's like the majority of my clients, but like it's but again, what did what did those times. guys do? They saw you, they saw the success you had, they liked your your vibe, they resonated with you, they hired you to show them this is what I did, and you guys can do it too, and then they fucking executed and implemented the step by step. To get that result, you know. Yeah, basically, it's it's the same thing. It's the same pattern. They they did two things. One is yes, they they you know they hired me or whatever. They learned everything they could from me, and then they added their own style and they built on that. So they didn't stop with me. They didn't limit themselves just to like copying my lines. They took everything that I had contributed, which is a lot, and then they built on that and developed their own style. Though it's the same pattern. Always know was if a guy's not willing to build on my teachings and play around with it and come up with his own style, he's going to be limited. Mm -hmm. For sure. For um, sure. Okay. Uh, Coach K, I see you follow Connor Murphy on Insta. Was he ever a fitness inspiration for you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I liked him back in the day when I think big Brandon Carter kind of like supported him too. This dude's gone off the deep end for sure. <laughs> I, I'm, not super, on the reg. <laughs> I'm not super caught up with it, but um, just, I, no, I, I think what it was, I, I, we have one mutual friend. Um, but basically what I heard is that he did a lot of ayahuasca and it fucked yeah. him up. And now he's just like, for some reason, just constantly doing ayahuasca. Yep. And he just had a bad experience with psychedelics, which happens like uh, a quick side tangent. But like I know people who got fucked up from psychedelics. Now, most of the time psychedelics can be good. But I think there's this misconception that psychedelics, because you can't overdose on them, that they're 100% safe. They're not. Yeah. And I know people personally who got fucked up by psychedelics. I think he's one of them. Yeah, I th also think he most likely did it in an excessive amount. So hard for me to say. I don't know too much about it. If, if For everybody that wants to know more on that, I know more plates, more dates is like constantly. He's got to stop drinking jizz. He's got to stop drinking <laughs> Take it easy yeah. on the protein shakes, Connor, and all will be well. Yep. Uh -oh. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like his, He goes to the doctor finally. Like, So what's your diet consisted of mainly for the last 30 days? Well, you know, I, uh, I'm drinking a lot of juice, doctor. Aha, uh -huh. okay, no, seriously. No, I've been drinking a lot of juice. Bro, he's doing more than that. He's, like, drinking piss and eating his feces and yeah, uh, going crazy with that. So. Um, okay. Do you have any idea to initiate a public pool when you ha don't have your own place or is it entirely down to the girl herself? For sure. For sure. I, I've gotten a lot of – well, I don't know if I would call them public pools, but I'd say non-bedroom pools uh, – a lot of them were the car <laughs> or uh, I don't know. So just other places in general. No, hold on, this dog's jumping on me. Um, yeah. So tips to initiate a public pull. I would say you definitely got to ramp up the sexual tension, sexual escalation. It, it needs to be at a point. It needs to be at a point where it makes sense where if we go to the car, like we're probably going to fuck or at least start making out. So uh, if I were to think back on some of my, closes in the car um it's just baby steps really bro like get if i were to close in the car if, if i were to think back on a couple times where i closed in the car it was good vibe good connection at the venue left the venue uh oftentimes it wasn't like hey let's go to my car and fuck it wasn't like that but there was a high sexual tension i just kind of suggestively led baby stepped it we got to the car and again, I didn't just throw this girl into the back seat and say, take off your clothes. Like we got into the car, we I put her in the passenger, I get into the driver's seat, we start talking, vibing, slowly start making out, getting a little touchy, maybe move her hand over to me to take it one step further than that. Uh, maybe pull back a little bit, maybe start touching her as well. And then from there, I've had occasions where the girl just starts going down on me. Uh, and then it could escalate from there. I've also had instances where we pulled back a little bit because the tension was getting hot and then we moved into the back seat because uh, I suggestively did that. Another pro tip is have 5% tinted windows if you're trying to do it in the car because I used to be a, an investigator. So my windows are very dark and tinted. So that definitely got me. Wait, you used to be an investigator? 
Yeah, I was actually a surveillance investigator before uh, doing this full time. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, my, uh, my version of that for online dating is I actually have a video. It's called How to Get Laid Even If You Still Live With Your Parents, one of my earliest videos. I'm literally wearing a neck brace in that video. But um, what I talk about in that video with online is you sexualize before the date over text. So if I'm try if I don't have logistics and I'm trying to bang a chick from Tinder, I'll uh, I'll sexualize heavily and then I'll be like, hey, we can uh, you know hang out in my car. We can you know is your place an option? But you need to first sexualize. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I'll do with online. Yeah. Alex, you should look into Austin Dunham. The guy maximizes SMB so much. The hottest Tinder chicks hit him up regularly. I'm not familiar with him. Are you familiar with uh, Austin? Yeah, yeah, I know him. He's um, he does a lot with the Red Pill community. I've seen him with AMS, uh, Fit FitX, I think. Steph is cold. He's like one of those guys. Um, I don't know. I don't. I honestly, I'm. I don't want to say anything bad about the guy because I truly don't know him, but. Again, I, I, I'd categorize him as another red pill guy, honestly. Um, but, he, yeah, he kind of maxed out his looks. But maybe I should watch more of his content. But Yeah, yeah you know what's funny? Are you familiar with the, um, what's his name? Um, Alan Roger Curry, ARC. I am not. I just heard that. Did you just interview him recently? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, that's where I saw his I name. I thought he was yeah. just like a red pill guy. But when we wound up talking, me and him agreed on pretty much everything. Cool. It was interesting. Even though, like, he's twice my age and comes from a different ethnic background. Very interesting conversation that we wound up having. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll check this guy out, Austin. Yeah. Um, how do you make her feel when she finds out that she's not good enough? Do you think this affects her self-esteem? Mm. Um, <laughs> how do you think you make her feel when she finds out that she's not good enough? Uh, do you think this affects her? I mean – Dude, what kind of what kind of question is? It? Do you think it affects her self esteem when she finds out that she's not good enough? Um, in terms of what, that probably tells me that you set the wrong expectation that she was expecting to be your boyfriend, and then she had some talk, and then you were like, "Hey, you're not good enough to be my boyfriend." So, I think it kind of came from improper communication and setting the wrong expectation with the girl. Honestly, so the best thing you could do is set the right expectation, communicate efficiently. So the girl doesn't get her hopes up. Um, another option is start attracting higher caliber women that are good enough and go for those um, women. I would you, say also how you communicate that. Don't tell her that you're not dating her because she's not good enough. Tell her that, hey, listen, you're fucking awesome. Uh, I'm just at a place in my life where I'm just not looking to be in a monogamous relationship. And yep. maybe if we met five years later, there would be a different story. Or like I'm just at a place where I don't think I can be you know, monogamous with anybody, but you're fucking awesome. And I still want to have you in my life. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference between framing it like that and framing it like, yeah, sorry. Like you're not good enough to be my girlfriend. Yeah. It's all, it's all about, uh, <laughs> it's the communication, man. And, and the expectation at the end of the day. So it sounds like you're really like talking down to this girl. Yeah, I just, I just be careful with how you frame it. Yep. You, even if she really is not quote unquote good enough, um, don't tell her that. That's where I think the white lies can benefit. Like, I don't yeah, like to lie, sure. but if it's to save someone's feelings in a mm -hmm. situation like that, like I'd much rather lie. Yeah. Um, I would like to see him do these live videos in actual females so we can see how it is with women, how he acts low. Well, I have plenty of videos um, with women. So there's plenty of those on my channel, like over a dozen for sure. Yeah. Um, so just go through my videos, but I do plan on doing more in the future. Um, Alex, fix your nose. You can do it. <laughs> Tommy, would this really make you happy if I fix my nose? Do you feel like the quality of your life would improve? Well, hey, man, you were trying to you, – if you're looking into the hair transplant and you're no, sure. – So the back – Maybe that, maybe something else to consider. I don't so know. So what happened was I broke my nose when I was 16, and I actually did have no surgery uh, within two weeks of breaking it. So believe it or not, it was like <clears> – it was even more fucked up. Shit. And, um, dude, that surgery fucked me up. I'll never do another nose operation again. I had breathing problems for over a year. Wow. Imagine, like, I don't know how to – it's such a weird feeling. It's just like my nose was chronically dry and no amount of, like, uh, whatever, like, products would make it, like – like, it just, like, oxygen – I would never had enough oxygen coming in, basically, for yeah. a year. It was fucking miserable. So I'll, I'll never touch my nose again after that. Gotcha. Uh, should I be embarrassed? I'm almost 23 year old virgin. I'm not an ugly dude at all, but it's my goal to have sex before my birthday. 
Um, you shouldn't be embarrassed. It is what it is. But yeah. you should definitely actively work on that. Yeah, I would just say own it, dude. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Own it and take proactive steps. If that's your goal, because you say your goal is to have sex before my birthday, own it and just take proactive steps to fix that problem, <laughs> period. What what advice would you give to a client who's a virgin? Client that is a virgin. Um, I, I mean, it's, I guess it still depends on where he struggles because – he says he's not an ugly dude at all. He's probably somewhat socially charismatic and, and decently outgoing. It's just a matter of, I guess, learning the steps to figure out where your sticking point is. You know, that's like week one of, of my mentorship is analyzing yourself and figuring out where your sticking point is so we can actually make a path to get past that, right? Because some guys are like, they can't even say hi to a girl or, right. you know, they, they it's either they can't approach at all, they can't display any intent at all, or they struggle to close, right? So if this dude's 23, virgin, not an ugly dude at all, I would say he's probably somewhat socially charismatic, probably gets a decent amount of attention from girls. Uh, it's just a matter of getting him into interactions, learning how to display intent and moving the interaction forward. So that's where I would put your focus on. Or if your goal is strictly to just have sex, the easier route is probably online, I would say, honestly. The advice I always give to virgins is make things as easy as possible for yourself. So uh, do you all mind uh, set up a straight up fuck date where you where you uh, tell the girl that you just want to have sex. Don't tell her a virgin, but just tell her what you're looking for. So the girl comes over to your place for sex. At that point, all you have to do is escalate. And then and then at that point, once you lose your virginity, progressively start putting yourself in more difficult situations. Then do a regular date. Then do cold approach. But initially make things as easy as possible for yourself and just build on that. Because I think the problem is, you know, guys who are virgins, they're still like going out to like popular clubs and they're trying to pull like tens, right? Like it's too much of a, and every time you fail that, you think you're more of a loser. So just start with the wins and then build on them. Yeah. I got to wrap up in like five minutes, Al. All right, cool. Let's take like two or three more questions. Let me find a good yeah. one. Or maybe just rapid fire if the short questions, whatever. Uh, Coach Kyle, what's good? I'm from Jersey. What places do you recommend for right now for day game and night game? Sweet. Um... Day game, honestly, I would recommend New York City if you're not too far. It depends on what part of Jersey you're in. If, if you're in northern Jersey, definitely make the trip out to uh, Washington Square, Times Square, Union Square Park. Those are it's like day game. I've heard it been called the day game capital of at least the USA. So that's one for that. Night game, depends on where you're at in Jersey, bro. You could go Hoboken's a good spot. Jersey City's a good spot if you're in more – central jersey i would say morristown's a good area if you're in even more south then i would hit up the shore belmar area for sure um belmar's popping right now definitely a good spot or if you're even further down south i would hit up atlantic city let's take this question coach kyle how would you rate the average smv of guys when they start coaching with you is that the first thing you address so i actually feel like based on my average client like I, I feel like they're actually pretty cool dudes. I don't know. I, I wouldn't say it's the same for every other coach. You know, typically each coach attracts a certain uh, type of client, right? I guess based on their vibe and who they are. Because I remember, um, I'm not going to say any names, but I remember studying with other coaches and taking- I brought work. some names, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember studying with some other coaches that were- a little bit more dry and logical and more technical dudes. And when I would like, when I went to their in-person coaching, the, the other, as a, as a student, the, the remainder of the, the clientele base was very similar, right? They were all like software engineers. We're definitely not talking about Todd Valentine right now, right? I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I actually just ran into Todd in Miami, which was. Oh, really? He was yeah. in Miami. Dude, I've been trying to get him on a podcast for ages. He keeps uh, turning me down. He's playing hard to get. Yeah, I haven't seen Todd since he fired me as an intern, which was like years ago. So I oh, saw him. You used to work for – so much shit I'm learning about you today. You used to work for Todd? Yeah, I, I, I applied as an intern for Todd. I took So I took Todd's boot camp. Um, I took his immersion in 2014 and 2015, I think, or maybe 16. I don't know when the fuck it was. But took uh, took two immersions with him in New York City, and then I applied to be an intern for him 2018 – and then I was pretty much like assisting within his company. And then ultimately I got fired for doing a fake testimonial for another 
another dating coach who's not he's not like big on YouTube or anything. I don't think he's on YouTube at all, but I did a testimonial for another guy since he helped me out so much. And then as a result, once I was working with Todd, he was like, hey, I can't have you in my uh, company. Oh, I think maybe he did tell me the story. Yeah, I think we talked about this in part one. Mm -hmm. So he he uh, he let me go, and then after that happened, I was like, I'm just gonna start my own YouTube channel. Right, right, yeah, I remember. And that. then I even reapplied to work for Todd when when my channel hit like a thousand subscribers. I was like, Hey, man, I don't know if you remember me. I just hit a thousand subs. I'm like trying to do this. Like, are you still interested? Never heard back from him, and then um, hadn't seen him since then. And then when I was in, I was out in Miami. I was in Live Lobby, and I think he was actually running boot camp. And I was like, oh, shit, yo, Todd's here. I got to at least say what's up to this dude. And, like, honestly, I just wanted to thank him because, like, he literally lit that fire under my ass to, like, force me to do this myself. So I went up to him and I was like, yo, Todd. He was like, he turned around. I was like, I was like, yo, man, I don't know if you remember me, but uh, he was like, I know exactly who you are. And I was like, oh, shit. I was like, well, dude, yo, I just wanted to fucking thank you for, like, lighting that fire under my ass and motivating me to uh, start my own channel, this and that, blah, 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 blah. So it was – it was refreshing to see it come back full circle to like get fired from his company, start my own yeah. thing. Years go by, end up seeing him. And he's like, yeah, dude, I know exactly who you are. Uh, dude, to make it full circle, uh, he would have to be your assistant. So <laughs> that would be like ultimate. And then, and then fire him. But yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I guess yeah. 80% circle, if you want to call it that. But yeah, yeah. homie, homie should have, I would, I would love to have a conversation with Todd. Like, yeah. I think a lot of these guys are under the impression that like, if they come on my podcast, like I'm gonna try to trap them and shit. But like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I try to have a respectful conversation with everyone, no matter whether I agree with them or yeah. how much I, I like them as a person. I'm still gonna have a respectful conversation with anyone who comes on my platform. So, Todd, if you're watching, this. I think I, I, I have a high level of respect for these guys. Honestly, I know a lot of people in the industry don't, and that you know, all ex RSD guys are like, no, I respect Todd a bit. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, so, RSD Alex is a good guy. He was on my channel. Yeah, I, just, I ran into him in Austin actually. Um, yeah, yeah, he was. He happened to be. He was walking the streets with uh, a couple of clients actually. I didn't. We didn't even connect, but uh, saw him out there. I, I feel like I've been running to, into all these fucking PUAs, dude. I saw Todd. Yeah, I was with it's, Madison. It's, it's, it's Sterling Cooper, right? Yeah, I ran into Sterling too. I got to connect with him too. Yeah, he's um, a good guy. But but funny, know, what? No, I just want to take this question and end it off on this because yeah. I think it's pretty interesting. What is your daily routine when it comes to gaming? Do you just wake up and plan to game eight hours every day? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you take first. I would say, well, first off, no, I don't, I don't do that. I also don't think that's sustainable um, at all whatsoever. I would say pick a routine that you could actually stick to. Another thing I would say is have periods of immersion where you actually do push outside of your sustainable limits, right? So like an example of that for me when I was like first learning was I would do these one week immersions with Todd or um, I did it with Todd two years in a row. And that was essentially a week where I would just – actually, I, I think we were doing it maybe eight hours those days. Like we would do a three-hour, four-hour day game session, do do like maybe one to two hours of lecture, and then uh, go out at night as well. So I don't think that's sustainable, but I think those periods are, are definitely beneficial to like push past where you're at. And then in between those, I would – I wasn't even gaming every single day to be fair. Like I, I pick a sustainable schedule that, that is realistic that you could still like keep balance to your life and keep your sanity. So um, I think from 2016, probably to the COVID outbreak. So figure like two, three years up until like we went into lockdown, I was, <laughs> this dog's like jumping on me. I would, I would probably go out, Definitely go out Friday, Saturday, and then Thursday or Sunday was optional. Probably do one of them and then maybe a date during the week. So I would say uh, roughly three nights out of night game and, and a date during the week. Sometimes it was more. Sometimes it was less. Sometimes there would be an extra date. Sometimes there would be no dates and, and extra uh, gaming. So mm -hmm. it's all about finding a sustainable schedule. But I would also say minimum two two days a week, like minimum just for maintenance or to get to get better. And then the more you could push past that, the better. But eight hours a day, it's nah, really dude. It's, it's, I you're, would you're, say you're, you're gonna you're gonna burn out hard within a few. Yeah. Weeks. Last thing I'm I would here. say is to focus on consistency, not mm. a, a jam packed day like going out Saturday and just doing that and flipping a switch to be that pickup guy. I'd rather you do one hour a day every day, you know, than eight hours on one day.
Yeah, I would say that I agree with you that you should have periods of immersion, but assuming you're not in a period of immersion, uh, like for me, this is my schedule. I film infield typically on Sundays for like one or two hours, not a lot. Um, I'll typically go out one night a week, like Friday or Saturday night. I go out with a bunch of friends and I chat up girls. And then I talk to cute girls who I see in my day-to-day -day life, which every day in Miami. And then maybe one night a week, I have a date with a new girl. And one night a week, I hang out with a girl who I'm already seeing. Something like that. Um, when I was like more trying to ramp up, I would have two or three days a week, two or three days a week going out. Uh, but I don't believe in doing long gaming sessions. I just don't. I think that's unless you're in an immersion period, I yeah. think you're going to burn out. You're going to become miserable. You're going to hate game. Mm -hmm. For sure, dude. For that's sure. It, it, especially when you hit those frustrating. It, it's not like this. OK, it, like there are ups and downs in yeah. game and results and all that. So if you're going out and just burning out and you hit a part where, where you're not where it's not going up and up and up it's very frustrating and i've i've seen guys burn out they they fall out of, of it for a little bit just due to frustration or lack oh, yeah. of what what they wanted you know so sustainability is huge i think incorporating it into your everyday life is huge like what you're saying you know you go out see a cute girl go up and say hi to that girl or see a cute girl at the gym say hi to that girl live a lifestyle where you're kind of forced to be social like like me last night dude like i was i was with my girl we didn't need to go out. We didn't, you know, like we went to the venue, like I'm with the hottest girl at the venue straight up. So I didn't need to go out and socialize, but I went out to socialize just to implement it into my life, to have a little bit of fun and live a lifestyle where, I mean, for me, it's a little different. Like I'm trying to go out with my girl and socialize. Yeah, but it was a little different. When like my girls go, yeah. we get high and we eat sushi and we bang. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like yeah. our routine we've gotten into. Eat sushi. She gives me a massage. We bang, we go off on a tangent about some random topic for two hours, bang again, pass out. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, that's uh, good too, but <laughs> look, you need periods of just chill and, and yeah. recharge recovery and, and being a homebody. I also think periods of going out and social. No, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so. Especially if you're trying to ramp up hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, dude, this was a dope podcast as always. Always a pleasure to have you on. So if people want to uh, support your work, people want to get coaching with you. What should they do? Yeah, man. Uh, link is in the description. Click the link, fill out the application, apply to work with me personally. Let's hop on a call. We'll talk details. And if it's a good fit, we can move forward with it. That's pretty much also, it. Yeah, check out Carl's YouTube channel. He has a lot of value on there. Do you think you're ever going to put the infield back on or do you think it's permanently off? That's a great question. I would love to put it out. I'm almost like jealous watching your infield because I'm like... Because I personally yeah, learned a bit from watching your infield. I'll just yeah. up. No, I didn't take it down because it wasn't educational. I took it down because my mentor told me to take it down. And ultimately, we're trying to, I guess, create something that's sustainable and somewhat professional. Yeah. And, um, you know, just having infield up does put the channel at risk. I feel like yeah, I'm already at a point now. Mm -hmm. Like, like, let me put it this way. If I was sub 100K following, mm -hmm. I, I would be blasting infield. That's what I did, actually, until I hit about – 150 or so um channel was super viral bro i was doing 1500 subscribers yeah. a day i, I hated 1500 a day yeah i was doing oh, roughly shit. about that for for a little while when everything was like super viral before any of the girls found out about their videos before mm -hmm. anybody anything got taken down yeah i think we we're doing like 1200 a day for a while so awesome. um i'm i'm pro infield in terms of growing a channel i'm not pro infield in terms of creating a sustainable business that's professional and can last, you know, five, 10 years. Cause dude, there's a chance you wake up tomorrow and it's all fucking gone and there's nothing you could do about it. So well, let's, let's hope not. Do you think yeah. you'll ever take your infield and put it on like a different platform? I have some of my infield on a paid product. Patreon. Um, I, have, I, I don't do I don't really promote the Patreon anymore. I do have a all in one product that has all of the Patreon lectures, some exclusive infield, the infield I was just telling you guys about earlier. Um, that's still out there. I don't even really promote that. Honestly, I'm really big into the mentorship right now. Cause what I found from giving guys hundreds of literally, it was like 80 plus hours of content, um, had a lot of guys becoming theory junkies that weren't taking action that just felt like they needed to keep watching more and more right. videos. And I was mm -hmm. that same fucking dude for the first nine months of my journey. Okay. It wasn't until I made an investment that had a coach that was like, take this fucking step to do the approach that I actually started taking action. And lo and behold, the moment I did that first approach, that nine months of studying theory went out the fucking window either way. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a different ball game when you're actually 
in there. So 100%. I've noticed with the mentorship, it's um, it's easier for me to, to coach my clients. It's also easier to get results for the clients because it's it's condensed in terms of theory, but it's more based on actionable steps that you can be taking right now and me holding you accountable and using that leverage to take the step-by-step process to actually become that social dude. So I'm super big into the mentorship. I'm not promoting anything else right now. If you guys are interested in learning more about that, working with me personally, face-to-face to achieve your goals, to give you a step-by-step plan, click the link in the description, fill out the application, and we could discuss further details on the call. Yeah, I think even infield aside, I think there's a lot of value in your YouTube videos. Like I watched some of the videos you're putting out and you got like good stuff in there, like how to flirt with a girl, how to like do this, how to do that, like very specific videos. So I encourage everyone to check out your channel as well. Like I personally, you know, watch it from Tom Tom. I think it's good stuff. Yeah, um, I mean, nothing compares to the infield though. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Yeah, like, the I I don't, to <laughs> you said it, not me. I'll, I'll give you a quick. I don't want like rub salt wanna, in the wound, you know. <laughs> I want to give you. Oh, I want to give you a quick tip because I've been watching your infields. Um, mm-hmm. One thing I would say is next time you put out an infield, condense it down. Like I see you putting out hour plus infield breakdowns. Um, I don't think that's what's going to get you to go viral. If I were to, if you were to follow my step-by-step guide, I'm actually going to tell tell you right now how I go viral. It's literally the second they click the video, it should be the highlight reel of the infield. Hmm. That's the opening clip. Okay. Um, Because I, I remember, I think I clicked on a different infield of yours earlier. It was, uh, I think it was Indian, it was Indian P P E or somebody's infield. And I, I, I started the video and like a minute and a half went by and I didn't even get to see the infield. And I was actually like, you know what? Fuck. I don't even want to watch this right now. Nothing against you guys, but you got to understand we're dealing with it's 2021. Everybody's attention span is not where it was. People are on TikTok. Okay. You, you want to make your infield, like it's going on TikTok. So um, just like how I think you I think you just dropped infield on Instagram. You're better off following that recipe for YouTube. Like literally hit them with the highlight reel of the interaction. Mm-hmm. Then quickly to you saying, hey, we're jumping into this video right now. I'm going to show you guys step by step how I open to close with the text breakdown of this girl. If you want more information on this, click the link in the description. Let's jump into the footage. Get right back into the infield quick. So okay. you do the highlight reel first and a quick explanation intro. Highlight reel, then super, you go to quick, the full thing. super quick if you want to do a promotion. If you don't even want to do a promotion, you could just go into the infield. Like if you're really just trying to go viral, minimal breakdown, tips on screen to explain mm. things that you don't even need to pause the video okay. for. And mm. then um, and then at the That's end – a good of, idea. Put the tips on the screen instead of like yeah, me talking about it. Yeah, and then, especially for small shit. Like uh, notice my body language. I, I lean back here to – to make me in a position of power of position of the higher position within the, the dynamic right here. Or um, I'll just point out like, notice my, my body language grounded, not rocking strong right. eye contact, stuff like that. You don't need to pause the tape that much, you know? So I would say open with the highlight reel. Honestly, what my, my most viral videos was highlight reel, my intro to my channel, and then right back to the beginning of the, the infield. And then and how long were those clips? Like five, 10 minutes? Um, my most viral video ever, which was 1.8 million, had zero breakdown on it. All tips on screen. It was opening highlight reel and intro to me and then full interaction from, from open to make out to phone number. And that yeah, was no, uh, – so this, this is good advice, man. Um, yeah. Definitely, you know, I'm definitely going to – Yeah, I was actually hesitant about bringing it up on the – the live because I'm ah, sure there's a, there's a couple other guys that are gonna nah, that's all good. fight it. But um, yeah, man, I, I when I watch your infields, two things I would say is one, I think you need a, a better, um, you got to get a better yeah. shot. You got to get a better shot. You should have the audio separate from the video. Don't use a wireless transmitter mm-hmm. if you are. I think you, I think you are. I am, yeah, yeah, I, I could tell because the audio crackles out. Record the audio strictly on yourself with a recorder. That way you have the whole audio. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can. And this may take a little bit of more trial and error. You might not be as successful with your approaches, but literally see the girl, have the cameraman go get into position so he's already got the shot before you even open. Then open and right. um, and then take the highlights, open the video with that, then intro video, then open to close of the breakdown, tips on screen to minimize you pausing the tape, and then whatever you want to say at the very end of the video, um, you could have a little sales pitch because I guarantee you it's going to bring you way more views. These are good tips, man. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. It's, the same, it's the same concept with any platform, man. Like I, I, 
I went viral on TikTok a couple times. Same fucking formula. Open, grab their attention, right? So my infields that that went viral was like me opening, me telling the girl she's cute. There's a moment where we're making out, and then the friend comes in to try and pull her away, and she's like, "I just want to talk to Kyle." And then it's us making out again, and then intro video, and then I started back at the beginning because now everyone's like, "Oh shit, this is this is cool, this is popping." Let's see how we how we cultivated that, you know? So mm-hmm. for you, it should be like the open, maybe the the part that you make it flirty or that the girl laughs, um, maybe a, a part where she shows a little bit of interest and then the phone number exchange or moving to the instant date or whatever it may be, you know? And then and then maybe like the text, the, the final text of her saying like, I had such a good night with you and then boom into it. Yeah, no, this is good shit. I'm part of a group chat. Um, I'm not gonna mention their names because they might want to stay anonymous, but like it's other YouTubers, and yeah. one of them was telling me that he's gone. He's had he's gaining like something like he said. What did he say? Like 300 subs an hour or something like that on his channel. And he said what uh, he's been doing is a lot of YouTube shorts because apparently YouTube is trying to just like destroy TikTok. So they're mm-hmm. really giving a lot of priority in the algorithm to all their shorts. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. That's like his this is his big piece of advice. So I want to pass that on as well. That's what I'm gonna be doing a lot moving forward, it's a lot of shorts. But anyway, this conversation probably should have on the fly because we're yeah. bore these guys to death talking about the YouTube algorithm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, dude, start implementing that. I guarantee you your your infield's gonna go up like way up. Yeah. Sure. All right, guys. So thank you for uh joining in on uh, next podcast. I'm gonna be actually popping on some podcasts. So tomorrow I'm gonna be on Mindful Attractions channel. Uh Thursday, I'm gonna be on Kezia Noble's channel, and I believe I have Oh, Bezos! Zeus. I have a video coming out with him uh, next week. So I'm going to be doing a lot of collaborations. Um, so check those out. And the next podcast we have is going to be Thursday. It's going to be an infield breakdown. So check that out as well. All right, guys. we got another video dropping on Tuesday. It's going to be a review of how to beast, actually. It's going to be an interesting one. No. So a reaction. No. Yeah. You guys are going to enjoy that. <laughs> that out. Make sure to awesome. subscribe to Coach Kyle. Follow his stuff as well. He's a good guy. I support him 100%. All right, guys. Thank you for joining. Until next time. Peace out.